You may have seen our descending videos before, and those tips are still valid. Everyone assumes that to be a pro descending, you have to go as fast as possible. But there's so much more to it than just that. Yeah, we know we should be racing downhills, but that doesn't mean we can't practice the basic principles of descending, which will make us more confident descenders. Oh, I lost him. First up is the assessment of the road ahead. Observing where the road is going. To be able to judge your speed around the corner, you need to accurately assess where the road is heading, which direction you need to be preparing to turn, how far you will need to lean, and ultimately how fast you will be able to navigate the corner. Knowing where to brake and how hard is critical to safety entering the corner on the right line. Is your braking zone on good tarmac? How hard will you be on the brakes while it's slowing down? And do you need to modulate the pressure applied based on the surface conditions? Deciding on where the exit of the corner is, is one of the most important parts of judging your speed. If you can't see far enough ahead, as you know what's coming. This is also known as the vanishing point and is crucial because you need to be able to stop in that distance. If the corner is tightening and you want to scrub some speed off, enter the corner with a tightening of your line so you've got a nice exit to the corner. On the other hand, if you've got a fast flowing corner that opens up, this is the perfect opportunity to go in wide and come out wide, set you up perfectly for the next corner. If you do have a clear line of sight, then great. Go fast, but stay safe. If, on the other hand, you can't quite see what's around the corner, then keep in mind that literally anything could be coming the other way. In the mountains especially, coaches and delivery lorries are not an uncommon sight, and they take up the entire road. An obstruction mid-corner can result in disaster if you're not expecting it. Either a slam on or a big swerve to avoid it. Either way, not ideal. You want to be able to preempt a mid-corner obstruction by always expecting the unexpected. The road surface beneath you needs careful consideration. Not all asphalts are made equally. They certainly don't grip equally either. In the wet, we all know we need to use more caution, but even riding the shady side of a hill will have less grip than the side that basks in the sun all day long. Does the road lean into the corner with you, or does it in fact drop away off camber? If it does drop away off camber, you cannot go anywhere near as fast as you've already got more of a lean angle on your tyres than you otherwise do. A well cambered corner, on the other hand, is kind of unrivaled in how fast you can take it and feels like the holy grail of descending. Now we've got observation covered, the next golden rule is never to exceed your limit. Actually, you want to ride within 90% of your limit. This will make descending a lot more fun and enjoyable. You'll be affording yourself plenty of reaction time by giving yourself a 10% buffer. After all, imagine absolutely pushing it on a descent and making one tiny mistake. Only one thing's likely to happen, and it's gonna hurt. How much of the road can I use? By now, having answered our previous category of questions, you will have built up a picture of how much of the road is available for safe use. You can only ride to what you can see, and you need to be able to stop if something is coming. Another key aspect is knowing that in the event of a puncture or a brake issue that you can use the runoff. And you can do this by knowing the descent and knowing the road you are riding on. That was a close one. All of these questions and observations are an ongoing process whilst descending and they all will happen within hundredths of a second. But the more consciously you ask yourself these questions, the quicker and more confident the answers become, to the point that you can completely switch off and enjoy the ride safe in the knowledge that nothing can go wrong that you don't have an answer for. So brake on time, keep your weight over your tyres, don't hang off the side of the bike moto style, as we don't have 200 kilograms beneath us, so this isn't really necessary. Instead, go for smooth, relaxed and balanced movements on the bike. Sure, if you're going fast, you will feel like you're throwing it from corner to corner, but in reality, you're aiming to maintain a good flow of momentum from one corner to the next. Aim to get low over the bike and keep your weight centered between wheels. Don't drag your brakes through the corners and certainly don't grab at the mid corner. Using all of the observation techniques will really accentuate how you are able to use your natural ability and convert that into speed. The actual physical control of the bike will then take a very natural progression in making you a lot faster. 
Pros are really good at assessing when to really push your limits and when to back off and just ride tempo. The same rules apply to descending. Whilst pros do often look pretty quick, there is a time and a place for it. And training is not one of them. There are no prizes for crashing when you're out on your own. No, and to be honest, pros are so used to racing on closed roads and roads they recce an awful lot. You don't think Chris Froome just chanced that epic descent a few years back, do you? Good point. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up. For more how-tos, click down here. Let's go over. Yeah, I mean, we haven't done it enough, have we? So let's, like let's hone it. our skills. Go.